Matt, this is goddamn exciting, mate. Uh, finals fever again. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, you know, it feels like it's been five years in the making, and now tonight to be playing um, first finals game um, in seven or eight years for the Breakers is, uh, especially given what we've gone through the last two years, it makes it even more sweet. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's it's almost the worst to first scenario, isn't it? Um, at any stage during this season, have you allowed yourself to to believe, to dream that you'd be in this position facing a final series tonight? Of course not. No, no, no. If you know me, if you know me at all, um, you know, I kind of work uh, the opposite way. I'm always, uh, unfortunately, like doom and gloom. But um, I knew that the right work was being put in. I knew that we played the right way. If you look at some of our kind of advanced metrics, the way we defend, the way we win on the road, I knew that we had a real chance. But um, I certainly never allow myself to think what it would feel like to win a championship. Very excited for the group, uh, especially the guys like Modi, Tom, Rob, Will, McDowell, White, the guys who've been with us the last three years and gone through those really tough times. So very happy for them. And um, I think I'll feel better tonight when the ball goes up and then we see what's what. Best of five. Very exciting. And I think we've got a really good chance. What's your role over the next a few days, the next week or so? How do you deal with the team? How much time do you spend with them? Yeah, so I traveled with the team yesterday. I'll go to, you know, I've been at practice the last few days. Um, but mostly I'm here just to support them in wh whatever I can. I tell Modi, I tell our commercial staff, the players, you know, Tom Abercrombie knows he can reach out to me at any time. Whatever they need. If that means, uh, you know, Tom comes to me and says, hey, you know, can, can we treat the guys to dinner tonight? Go out to a nice restaurant? Or, you know, can you speak to the guys? I think my role is just to um, be a fly on the wall. And if I'm needed, um, hop in. But, um, other than that, I'm just here to support the guys. I think that that's the most important thing I can do. The playing staff, the performance staff, the commercial staff, they've put in the hard yards this year. They've put in the work, and I'm here to support them and hopefully um, do anything I can to help. What is what is your what is your gut feeling in terms of of how the team and the squad is? Because you'll be able to get a real a real eye on this for us. Just in terms of has the level of tension raised, and and also you know going back to previous seasons and things. What what do you what do you detect mood wise? Yeah, you know I you know kind of my one message to the team um, has been to find a way to enjoy this. You know, I was lucky enough, I won some championships as a player, I played 10 years. And what you don't realize as you're going through it is that these are the times that you'll miss most. These are the times that you'll cherish most. My message to the guys, I mean, you know, you have five games together with this group. This group will never play together again. That's the reality. No matter what, we'll have some change next season. So my message has been, enjoy it, play for the guy next to you. In terms of my feel for the team, I think we're as ready as we can be. Um, Sydney certainly has an advantage in terms of their championship experience, having gone through this last year. Um, besides Tom Abercrombie and Tom Badanovich, we have no one else who's played in a championship as a professional. Um, but I think, you know, given the way we play, given the team and the style we've had all year, I think that that can play, you know, to our advantage. We're going to go out, we're going to play free, we're going to play tough. I've got a good feeling. I think that sometimes, um, you know, playing groups have something that special sauce, something about them that can't put, quite put a finger on. I think we've had that all year. And um, like I said, I, I really like our chances. Sydney's a great team, great organization. Love those guys too. But I, I, I like our chances. Yeah, look, looking at the results this year, Sydney uh, won in, in Auckland in, in November, also did that in December. But Breakers beat Sydney in Sydney on the 22nd of January. So that's not that long ago. It's only six or seven weeks. I know it's probably immaterial when it comes to these finals, but surely it does add some confidence that, hey, these guys are beatable and they are beatable on home floor. No question. Um, you know, I think that we go in with an unwavering confidence that we can beat them. Um, JB, specifically, Joel Brownlee had a great game that last game. I think that, you know, gives him as our leader and our MVP a lot of confidence going in. And if you look at those first two games we lost, they controlled most of the game. Uh, the first game was, I think, the biggest, like, foul disparity in NBL history. Something like Sydney committed three fouls going into the fourth quarter. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't look at those losses and lament over them too much. But certainly that win in Sydney gives us a lot of confidence going in. And, I think for us, the focus is to try and go in, steal game one on the road, and that kind of gives us the, um, you know, the advantage going forward. But um, either way, we know coming back to Spark Arena on Sunday, 
complete sellout. Uh, you know, however game one goes, we feel good about our chances going into game two. Oh, it's going to be mad. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be just so good to be inside that arena. Hottest sporting ticket in town at the moment. Are you able to remove yourself at this time, Matt? Because it's your organisation. You're a businessman. What you want to see is it packed to the rafters. You want to see your sponsors happy. Yet You want to see the fans there wearing your kit. Are you able to remove yourself from actually the results and go, oh, wow, this is a success for me because of what's the turnaround and I'm seeing a full house? You know, I am because one of the things I've always said was that at the end of the day, we're an entertainment product. And you said that my vision for the Breakers has always been to provide incredible entertainment for our fans and make it so it is the hottest sporting ticket in town. And I think the one thing we've done is with 100% certainty, we've done that. I think you go to any other sporting event um, in New Zealand, and while some of them are great, they fall flat compared to what we offer. So, um, you know, that's what gives, that's what makes me the most excited. When I'm sitting there and Spark Arena's rocking when we're doing our introductions, that's when I'm the most excited because you look around and you see people of all ages, people of all ethnicities, everyone's having a great time from the time you get in the, the arena till the time you leave. So, um, I think a lot of credit goes to our commercial staff there because um, our game night is is uh, objectively a lot of fun. You know, and look, I've been a critic over the last couple of years because it did fall flat and I wondered whether or not the approach was right and whether the razzmatazz was right and everything else. And I'm happy to eat the humble pie and you did get it right. How, how, have, you, how, how have you sat there and thought about this and planned this? Because there is a real American sports influence there. I'm talking about the connection. You know, you've actually managed to connect with, with not just fans, but more impressive with an age group that a lot of sports in this country are disconnected with. Rugby don't have the younger generations. You've managed to tap in. Is it something that you've actually sat back, actively thought about, planned and created? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, when I bought the Breakers, the on-court success was there. What the Blackwell did, the organization was absolutely phenomenal. But I looked at our game night and it was dated and there was a lot of improvement that I really felt if we got it right and we won over the fans that it would really connect with people of all ages like i said and with basketball growing number one participation sport in the country i knew that if we put out an unbelievable product that people would come and it would take some time you know our first year i got more uh, you know hate emails and complaints yeah, yeah, yeah. about us changing the game night and it was well deserved if somebody asked me late, uh, last week do i feel vindicated and I don't feel vindicated because, you know, what I said was that that indicates that somebody was wrong. I don't think anyone was wrong here. I just had unwavering belief that if we provided this incredible entertainment, eventually it would catch on. And part of that is putting a winning product and a team that Kiwi fans can be proud of. And I think we've nailed that this year. And you started to see it in 1920 when we won 11 out of 14 games and Spark Arena was getting seven, eight thousand. And then we had COVID. So, you know, I'm just proud that we've been able to bounce back. And most importantly, I'm proud that. Kiwis seem to really have gravitated towards the team and they've gotten behind them. And for me, I think that that's what guys like Tom Abercrombie, Rob Lowe, these guys deserve. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very excited that the product that we do put out um, is something that, that people are proud of. And it's, it's always, you know, we're always refining it. We're always looking at what other clubs, not just in the NBA in the States, but around the world are doing to um, attract fans, to make it a great experience. So it's still a work in product uh, in progress, but I think, I think our team has done a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, this might be a bit of a dumb question, but, you know, here in New Zealand, I mean, participating in the Australian competitions, as you know, we've got the Warriors, we've got uh, the Phoenix, we also used to have Trans-Tasman Netball as well. The Breakers have been overwhelmingly the most successful. I'm, what my what my dumb question is, obviously you're aware of that, but do you also understand how much it means to us Kiwis being in an Aussie competition and beating those guys? I think I do. You know, it's not something I understood when I first bought the team. Um, but you know, I lived in New Zealand for four years. I felt that all the time. And that's kind of what I come down to or come back to when, you know, we wanted to build a team that Kiwis could be proud of. We wanted to go out and get Isaiah Leoff and Tom Padanovich, tough Kiwis, bringing them back. We wanted to play a brand of basketball that makes you feel like you're at the All Blacks where you're tough and you compete and you do things the right way. And that starts with Modi and the rest of the staff. So, um, I certainly do understand what it means. Um, and, man, you know, I want to beat the Aussies too as, yeah, as, much, yeah. as, as much as anyone, you know. I hate them as much as anyone. Go so um, I certainly know what it means uh, for Kiwis. And um, that's why I think this is such an intriguing finals. You know, it's us versus Big Bad Sydney Kings. And um, like I said, I like our chances. 
And, and, and finally, we thank you so much for your time, Matt. Look, game one tonight, people. It's in Sydney and then Sunday night. Uh, it's the best of five, of course. That's back at Spark Arena in Auckland. The Breakers playing the Kings one and two on the table. The two best teams scrapping it out here for for the title. Also, are you are you do you put a perspective on it that, look, this is just the the rebirth of the beginning. It's not the end of anything, that whatever happens with these finals, of course you want to win it and everything else, but this is the stake in the sand that says from here things have turned around and we are we are back and we are building again. I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of you. Is that how you are feeling? 100%. Um, you know, again, I come back to kind of the, the second half of 1920 when we were a year and a half into our ownership and we got rolling and, we were the hottest team in the league and Spark Arena was bumping and then COVID hit. And, you know, we looked at this year very much as we need to earn the fans' trust back. We need to get the Kiwi public behind us. We were out of market for two years, only sports team in the world. We knew that it was going to be hard work. And we, we welcomed that work. You know, we didn't anticipate that everyone should just jump on the bandwagon because we're back. We knew we had to earn our fans back. And now that we've done that, it's something that we hold and we cherish and we understand the responsibility that comes with that. And, you know, one thing I will tell all the fans out there is this is who the breakers are going to be moving forward we're going to put amazing teams out there we're going to put a team out there that's tough that kiwis can be proud of and um you know win or lose this finals this isn't going to be the last time that we're in the finals this is like you said just the beginning we're going to be in the playoffs every year and we're going to put a team out there that that everyone can be proud of and everyone can get behind um and you know whatever we have to spend to do that that's my commitment um, from me and my ownership group. And this is just the beginning. Uh, hopefully it's with a uh, championship this year. And, um, you know, we want to be back to winning four out of five years like we did, um, you know, 10 years ago. So that's our commitment. And um, th that I can promise the Kiwi, the Kiwi public.